Good morning and welcome to the Rescued Film Project. My name is Levi Betweiser. I'm the founder and film technician for the project. Today we're going to be processing film, but more specifically we're going to be processing C41 color film. Let me show you how we do it. Now the very first thing we do when we get a batch of film in, either if it's from a contribution or from something we've purchased or acquired from one of our camera dealers, the very first thing we do is label that roll. We label all rolls based on origin in which we get them. So for instance, if it's in the United States, we label the rolls by the state in which we acquired it. If it's outside the state, it's by the country. If it's a contribution, we organize and label all rolls based on the name of the person who contributed the film. So this one has a teeny little label on it right here, and it is Michael Hayes. So Michael Hayes contributed this roll to the project, and so I will process all of his rolls together in the same batch. Most of it is 35 millimeter, which is great because the tank that we're gonna be using in today's development process can process up to eight rolls of 35 millimeter at once. Now for my C41 color chemistry, I really prefer the Unicolor C41 powder kits that you can get on freestylephoto.biz. Now the ones I like are only a thousand milliliter kits, and since my tank holds 2500 milliliters, I need to mix up three of them. Now the first step before actually mixing up the chemicals is to hook up the water filtration system. Obviously I am developing film right here in my kitchen in my house, and it's an older house with older pipes. There can be all sorts of lead and contaminants that come in either through the city water or from the pipes themselves. So I've actually created my own filtration system that hooks directly to my faucet. It's basically just a hose with a filter. All I have to do is pull off my faucet head, just unscrews, and then screws on my filtration system. Now these C41 powder kits come with four things in the box. The first one is the mixing and development instructions. You've got your stabilizer powder, your Blix A, and your Blix B, and your developer. Now, like I said, I'm gonna need to mix up three of these, but since my graduated cylinder only holds up to 2,000 milliliters, I'm gonna mix two at a time, and then I'm gonna mix one more. The first thing I like to start with is the stabilizer, just because you'll just have to mix it at kind of lukewarm room temp water. All right, so next I'm gonna mix the Blix, and the Blix is actually a two-step process. It's got the Blix A and the Blix B. And with the Blix, it's a little bit more important that you get the water temperatures correct. So I'm gonna pull out my digital thermometer, and I'm gonna heat the water to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, I'm just putting the thermometer directly in the water and then adjusting the faucet nozzle. All right, there we go. With the Blix, you can't just fill it full of 2,000 and then put the powder in. Obviously, the powder takes up volume, but also, when you mix the A and the B together, it actually fizzes and foams up. So if you go right to the top, then it's gonna overflow. So you actually, for every thousand milliliter, you actually only put 800 milliliters of liquid in first, stir it, and then fill it up to a thousand. So what I'm gonna do right now is fill it up to 1600 milliliters, mix in two batches of Blix, and then fill it up to 2000. And then while stirring, pour in the Blix A, both of them. Then continue stirring. Immediately put in the Blix B. Watch it fizz up. Continue stirring and we'll pour it for storage. All right, so the final thing we're gonna mix up is the developer. It also has to be mixed at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Same thing, we'll put in 1600, mix up two batches of developer, fill it up to 2000, and then do 1000 after that. All right, that's it, all chemicals are mixed. Now, just because you mix your developer and your Blix at 110 degrees, that is not the temperature that you process the film at. For color film, you have to develop it at 102 degrees Fahrenheit. For Blix, you have to be between 95 and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And for the stabilizer, it just has to be at room temperature. So obviously, I just mixed my color developer at 110 degrees, so I have to cool it down to 102 degrees to start the development. So what I do is I put my thermometer in it, and then I put it right in my freezer. Okay, all the chemicals are cooling down and we should be able to process in a few minutes after we get our film loaded in the lightproof tank. But I wanted to take a moment to stress the importance of properly handling your chemicals. None of the chemicals that you use in film developing can be poured down the drain. Once exhausted, all your chemicals need to be stored in plastic containers and then taken to your local hazardous waste depository. 
Okay, so now we're ready to actually load the film into the lightproof tank. Now, if you watched a World War II development video, you know that I load my film in my bathroom. And that's because there are no windows in my bathroom. To load film into the lightproof tank, you have to do it in complete darkness. Now, it's great if you have a room like this that you can do it in, but you can also do it in a film changing bag if you don't have access to a room that's completely dark. So my setup in here is always the exact same. I line up my reels with the film directly on top of it in the exact order in which I'm gonna put it in the tank. That way, what I can do is I can make a list of all the rolls of film and what order I'm going to take them out in so that I know exactly which rolls I'm taking out when I'm hanging. Now the rolls closest to me are going to be the ones first in the tank, which means they're going to be at the bottom, which means they're going to be the last ones that I take out of the tank. So that way I know exactly which rolls are coming out so I can label them accordingly. Alright, so now it's time to load, so I just got to shut off the lights. Alright, so our chemicals have cooled down to 102 degrees Fahrenheit, our film is loaded in the tank, and we are ready to start developing. So the first step is the pre-soak, which basically just means you put water in the tank and let the film soak in that for a minute without any agitation. Alright, stopwatch. One minute. Just pour the water out. Reset your stopwatch and pour the developer. Taps and then agitate. Use a little agitator or inversion for 30 seconds. I use this little agitator, and all it's doing right now is just turning the film inside the tank like this so the new developer can get over the film. Agitate for the first 30 seconds continuous. Two more taps. Then we're going to agitate for five seconds every 30 seconds for three and a half minutes. All right, 30 more seconds. And we're immediately going to pour in the blicks. While you're pouring, reset your timer. Agitate for the first 30 seconds continuous. Just like the developer, we're going to agitate for 5 seconds every 30 seconds, except this time the blicks process is 6 and a half minutes. After the blicks, we wash for 3 minutes. When washing, you want water to be constantly running over the film, and with my system, I can stick a hose right in there. It forces the water down through the middle and back up through the sides, constantly washing the film. Wash it for three minutes. Okay, so the three minutes of washing are complete. Pour in your stabilizer. Agitate for the first 15 seconds. You only need to stabilize for 30 to 60 seconds. One last step and then we'll pull these out. Fill it up just above the reels. Then you need some photo flow to help. Uh, it's a wetting agent. It helps the film dry without streaks. I generally put about three quarters of the cap for this size of a tank. And then just kind of mix it, mix the photo flow up with the liquid. We're ready to grab our first one. Twist it open. Pull the film off. And we have pictures. You want to squeegee it very, very lightly. If you press too hard on the squeegee, you can scratch the negative. Right, so now what I do is I take all the film into my office and hang it in my film drying cabinet. All right, that's it for batch one today. Now we're going to repeat that process over and over for about the next 12 hours. Hopefully we'll get all these rolls developed today. We started processing around 9 o'clock this morning, um, so we're getting on the 11 hour mark. I think I have about 70 rolls of color 35 millimeter processed right now. I'm not going to get through all the C41 color film I have right now, but my goal is to get through all of your contributed film by the end of the night. Alright, so that's it for our 14 hours of developing. I think I got over 80 rolls processed today. The film drying cabinet filled up pretty fast, so I put all the overflow film in the closet, which I have to do quite often. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel here for more videos like this and for more videos from the Rescued Film Project Archive.